Hello, friends, and welcome into Outreach Radio Chicago. I am your host, Mike Ricardo, and I want to thank you for making us a part of your day. You can follow us everywhere in the universe, guys. We're on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like the page on Facebook at Outreach Radio Chicago. And if you missed any show, go to YouTube slash Mike Mercado 2333. And on today's show, guys, we have a very, very special guest, a local hero. First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek joins us on Outreach Radio Chicago. He had an amazing story. Uh, he was wearing a military helmet, bullet ricochets out of it, saves his life, and he gets a ceremony for it as he gets it back a few years later. He's going to tell us the story in just a little bit. And the theme of the show today basically is to show the appreciation to the men and women who serve our great nation. And we don't do that enough sometimes. I know it's a trope. We try to. It's everyday life. You know, we don't see them. And they, they're out there serving for us, protecting us. And on Outreach Radio Chicago, it is it, we take it as our duty to at least every time we can to say thank you to anybody who serves this great nation and their family who make that type of sacrifice. And later on in on the show, you're going to hear First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek, local guy from Wilmette, Illinois. And it's a great story, guys. He's a really cool guy. So I really hope you enjoy the show. Please follow us on Twitter. We're at mercado2333. You can like the page on Facebook at Outreach Radio Chicago. If you missed any show, just go to YouTube slash Mike Mercado2333. Coming up, First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek joins us on Outreach Radio Chicago. Thank you for keeping it tuned in to Outreach Radio Chicago with Mike Mercado. Don't forget you can find us everywhere in the universe. We're on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like our page on Facebook at Outreach Radio Chicago. And if you've missed any, you should go on YouTube slash Mike Mercado2333. So everybody knows who listens to the show. I'm a big nerd when it comes to superhero stuff, and it's a great time to be alive. If you love going to the movies and watching this stuff, you get to see these crazy stories being told and whatnot. But every once in a while, it... it in real life, you get to interact and get to meet heroes. And on Outreach, we've gotten a chance over the last few months to to do that when it comes to people in our armed service. Well, today, it's an even bigger pleasure for us. Because we got a local guy here from Moonnet. He is First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek, and he joins us today on Outreach Radio Chicago. And uh, before we get started, uh, sir, I really want to just thank you for uh, for your service and for giving us your time. Uh, you know, I, I before we got into the show, I was uh, speaking to some uh, some of my friends, and uh, the one thing I, I, I always get, it's interesting because we always say, like, our heroes overseas and our heroes that are protecting us, and... Over, it becomes a trope because day to day process we don't we don't think about the guy, the men and women who serve for us, and we don't get the chance to say thank you so often because they're out there protecting us. And so whenever we get the chance, we really just want to thank all you men and women. So, uh, first lieutenant, thank you so much for joining us here today. How are you? I'm doing well, and thank you for your appreciation. It means a lot to me and everybody else who wears the uniform. Day in and day out. Yeah, I mean it is a uh, a sacrifice that you guys make, and your and something that goes on look way too often is that the family makes for uh, for our protection, so that we could do a radio show like this to tell your story and to tell some of some of the greatest stories of uh, pe- our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, and uh, so yeah. Anytime we could do anything like that, it'd be great, and especially for for somebody like you, a local guy. So uh, so you're from around here, huh? Yeah. So I grew up in Wilmette, went to high school in Detroit. Um, yeah, it, I I love it. I, I miss Chicago every day. I back <laughs> every chance I can. Where uh, where are you located at? Right now I'm at uh, the Fort Hood, Texas, about an hour north of Austin. Oh, uh, so you got to deal with cowboy fans all day. Yes, I do. <laughs> That's the sympathy right there. So why don't you want uh, uh, in the beginning of the show we uh, we told a little bit about your story, but uh, I guess the best way to do this is just there's no words that kind of describe and. For me, it's a lack of a better term, but like close calls, a close encounters, just um, you know something that that it's almost unimaginable. Can you just tell us how it was? Uh, first of all, how we got to this point where 
so it this company, the program executive office, they they have this um, this combat helmet, right? And this th- this helmet saved you, right? So when it when it happened, I mean, I was clutching this helmet when I walked into the hospital in uh, in Afghanistan after the incident the, after the incident happened, and uh, you know when I got medevac, I, I they I gave them all, I gave away all my other gear, I gave away my pistol, my rifle, my kit, uh, everything, but I was holding on to this helmet because I didn't want to give it up, and uh, my one of our supply officers came by and said, I gotta take this, you, you're gonna have to get a new one, and we gotta take this and send it off. And uh, begrudgingly so, I, I relinquished it. And uh, but he said, "Give me an address, and uh, you'll get it back." And so I gave an address. And uh, two years went by, and mm-hmm. until this uh, this past April, when I got an email uh, from a civilian technician out of Virginia, and she said, "Mr. Meek, we have your PPE. Please contact me uh, to discuss returning it to you." And immediately. Right off the bat, I knew, I mean, this is two years have gone by, mm-hmm. tons of trials and tribulations and, and thoughts and, you know, developing my own sort of closure with, without it. And I knew exactly when I saw that email, without skipping a beat, what, uh, what this was about. Uh, in, in the military, PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. It can be anything from, I, um, from sunglasses to mm-hmm. gloves uh, to, the, to your body armor. And so I got this message, and uh, we started uh, we started inter uh, communicating and discussing how I get it back. And uh, due to due to legalities of the program, they can't just give the equipment back in full. So mm-hmm. I was informed that they would have to cut it in half before they gave it back. Really? I was pretty with that. <laughs> yeah. I was... <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> crazy. It's it's, a, uh, it's almost like a keepsake at that point, and it just has purely. Um, uh, uh, sentimental value. Okay. Um, I'm not looking to use it for any other purpose than than to kind of just cherish it for as, uh, as as a good sentiment. Right. So I was appalled. I didn't contact him for two months. I said, "This is crazy. You're, this is ridiculous." But uh, mm-hmm. and and I reached out to some people, and you know, I tried to see if I could some way get around it. But but I mean, it was a legal review, and uh, uh, and with that program, and and that's how they do it. But after receiving it last Friday, it is amazing. They did an amazing job, and uh, my hats off to PEO Soldier uh, for putting putting it together because it really is. They've turned it into something that I can now hang on my wall and uh, and even pass down to kids and grandkids. That's and, awesome. And it actually, it's something that can stay in the family. Yeah, um, it looks like something you would see in a mu- almost in a museum now. Well, it has uh, so much history, which is pretty amazing. It's it's a physical piece of uh, American history right now. No, it is. Yeah. And it's so relevant right now as well with uh, the way yeah. the, the world is going and what, what we see on a daily basis. Now, what is it when, you, when you're when you there on that day and all this is going on? Like, what comes to mind at first? Because, you know, it's easy for us. See, television always gives us this idea of what we know what it is for, for our heroes to come back and when they, when they experience something like this. So what's the first thing that comes to mind when there's this big celebration and and you're just sitting this is like, no, this is this is so much sentiment. This is all great, but is it one of those things where to you it's just it means just so much? Yes, it does. It means it means a great deal to to me and everybody else when we return to to be welcomed back and for everybody. I mean we have we come back and uh, we're on the white buses coming back from the airport and there's ever friends and families are all there on the parade field and uh, we get off the buses behind the behind the buses, and the crowd can't see us. And then the buses, uh, we we're in formation, and then the buses drive away, and our friends and families are all there, and it's a big stadium kind of seating, and this humongous crowd of people, and wow. we march in formation onto the parade field, uh, and then we we salute, and then we uh, are released to our families, and really the families are released to us, and they they just <laughs> rush. They rush the formation to, to find their loved ones, and it's one of uh, it's one of the most powerful scenes I think I've seen uh, in my life. Uh, that redeployment experience, and, and everybody, the entire unit, being reunited with their family all at once. Is that what it's all about? Yeah, I mean, uh, you do it for the guy next to you. You, know, you do it for uh, your family, 
Um, everybody joins with uh, with a certain set of values, and that's why they do the job day in day out, and uh, for no usually for no personal gain of, for themselves. And I mean, like you said earlier, it's a, it's a sacrifice, but it's a sacrifice we take willingly. And it's a sacrifice not a lot of people are willing to make, and that's the difference between. You know, I don't want to get on a political soapbox, but that's the difference between, you know, the United States and so many different places, men and women like you who willingly leave your family and your family willingly allows you to and gives you the peace of mind to go serve and protect the guy to your left, the guy to your right in front of you and behind. And then somebody, Joe Schmo, working in a radio station, just trying to uh, say thank you as much as he can. So, like, what's what's what the motivation of of let's say your the deployment's done is it that is it just that calling that you guys get what what is it that's in that uh cuz i have um uh the franks on they're from a heart of marine in elk Grove village and their son was was like that it's like it's a brotherhood is there just something is it undescribable that once you're in it and and been a part of it uh, yes yeah, largely largely undescribable to someone i mean if you've been a part of any team mm-hmm. uh, you know that when you work as a team and when you, when you accomplish uh, and overcome adversity as a team, you develop a bond together. And uh, when you have an organization like a military organization and uh, it's, it's an actual fight that you're preparing for, when you go and do that, uh, and, and even for those of us who haven't deployed, it, it doesn't really even matter if you deploy. You, you put on the uniform every day, you salute the flag, and you all adhere to the same set of of values, and uh, it it bonds you. You know you're part of a subculture within the United States that is uh, based around protecting and serving, and and that's what uh, and that's what we're proud to do. And that's why it's something that you, you can't ever take away uh, from us once we've done that. You know, once we've served. I mean, there's tons of people out there that leave the military every day uh, and don't necessarily you know serve a 20 year career, but uh, you never it cha- it changes you forever. It's, it's part of your character. It's, it's in your blood, so to speak, uh, and uh, it's really powerful. Yeah, and it, it, you can almost uh, hear it in the voices and and the the energy that you get from a lot of these a lot of these uh, men and women. It's 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 intoxicating sometimes when you just hear just the the pride and that, and it's great. That's that's what we're we'll, honestly what. What drives this 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 nation? And it's our honor right now. We have on First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek, local kid from Well, well met. It's 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 so great to have you on. So let's, you know, obviously there's so much dark. I don't want to say so much dark, but there's so much negativity that that's looked on when it comes to like you know you're serving in in a wartime. But what are some of the cool things like that you've seen like traveling, or just some of the things that you've experienced or seen when, whether firsthand or or somebody that you've that you've come in contact with. Yeah, so this is my favorite thing to talk about because uh, it is amazing. So first of all, I was a part of an organization mm-hmm. that uh, projects, you know, power in the form of men in the form of men and women serving their country and projects that forward in defense of itself. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be, it's a huge system, and uh, to be a part of that. So they said okay, your unit's deploying, you're going here, and we have a mission. And then you get into this, this huge, you know, grinding gears that just, it's, it's a machine. And uh, to be a part of that, get on a plane, go to go ha- uh, halfway across the world uh, and deploy is amazing. And then uh, secondly, I mean, to a place, uh, Southwest Asia is extremely culturally diverse. Wow. Um, and... Uh, in Afghanistan in particular, extremely tribal, not a lot of uh, infrastructure there, and night and day different from the United States as far as the, the way we live here. Um, the, so I had to work, I had to partner with other, with Afghans there. And uh, to, to do that required a lot of education, a lot of passion, because you have to transcend uh, a full, a full uh, three barrier times. So their language is different, their religion is different, and their culture is different. Uh, and that's something that, uh, I mean, if you, you go onto the full other side of the spectrum, you can go to Europe and, and you can meet people that have a different language or have a different culture uh, or some people that have a different religion. But rarely do you find uh, that you get all three uh, as a barrier to communication. And 
And so interacting, it was just learning. Everything is different uh, from the, from the way that they the way that they conduct their meals to the mm-hmm. way that they treat family, uh, to the language they speak, uh, to the religion, uh, to the, the you know the, the higher power that they worship. Um, and it's just fascinating. It was so fascinating to see that. And from being from like the Midwest, you know, do you do you see? How was that? You know, just that that big right. difference, like the uh, the Chicago way of life to to, the, to that. You know, right. So uh, a good preparation for that in mm. in my life is I went from Chicago. I went to school in uh, North Dakota. Okay. And for the University of North Dakota, has got one of the best flight schools in the world, and so that's that's where I went to be a pilot, mm. and that's where I got my degree and everything. Mm. But the culture in uh, rural North Dakota is also a little bit more opposite than the culture in Chicago, you know, yeah. culture, you know, I mean, in uh, Chicago, you can approach anybody on the street and, you, you know, you can, you can start yelling, hey, how's your day, you know, and you can go <laughs> on and, and you can kind of, it's, it's not aggressive, but, you know, it's loud, it's noisy, it's mm-hmm. noisy, uh, mm-hmm. and we got no problems with that. In, mm-hmm. uh, in North Dakota, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more, you know, kind of like the Fargo mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay more passive aggressive up there and uh um it's it's just a totally different culture in, in how you do things that's and really cool relate and interact on a daily basis and so that was kind of uh, so i took that kind of i had to adopt an openness you know and uh, yeah. uh, a possibility that there is you know there's a different way of doing things that i don't understand but i just have to be patient and observe and learn, and I will understand eventually. And so I kind of took that mentality into it, uh-huh. and uh, I, I've developed some very powerful, some very strong relationships with some of the some of the guys I worked with over there. Um, a uh, Friedman Mustafa Sawari, he was my main uh, counterpart in the Afghan National Arm, uh, Army over there. Uh, Friedman is the word for lieutenant, so he was a lieutenant just like me. Okay, um, and. Uh, uh, I'll never, I mean, we, he spoke actually, so a little bit of broken English. Mm-hmm. So where I would not be able to kind of be able to have complex communication in uh, Dari, which is what I, I tried to learn as much as I could to, to interact with the locals over there. Mm-hmm. Um, he would kind of fill in those gaps with his broken English. So between my broken Dari and his broken English, we were able to, actually communicate without an interpreter sometimes. And That's cool. Yeah. You just never know, right? Who would have thought? Yeah. yeah. I know to meet this guy and he, and he almost he speaks English enough for, for us to have a conversation. I mean uh, halfway around the world yeah. in uh, Afghanistan. I mean that was that was pretty cool. And that's something you only experience when you uh when you did something like that, you know, when you're and that's what's just amazing. It's like after, all all the the stuff that you see through through the media, and obviously it's because of ratings and everything like that. We don't need to get into that discussion, but for you to just say like, "Yeah, I, this guy who's my counterpart, you know, halfway across the world, and we're here trying to finish each other's sentences because we have the same goal in mind," and it really just puts into perspective that you know we're all kind of we're all supposed to be on the same team, you know. And that's 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 amazing. And I, I, right now we're we're being joined by First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek. And um, you know, looking back, how long have you been been serving? Uh, I'm on four years now. So that's let's two. say within those four years, from today to the f- let's say the first year, what would you tell uh, Pass uh, Jeffrey Meek about what you would experience, or w- you know, kind of kind of give him advice? What would you do that, or any any kid that's going to be listening to to the show today? Kind of what what would you say back then that you know now? I would say keep doing what you're doing. That's, that's honestly what I would tell mm-hmm. myself. From back then, I, I look back on this uh, off, fairly often, and uh, mm-hmm. I feel like I remember what I did and who I was you know, when I joined, and I almost see a different person from where I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just through a natural maturing process, you know, a hardening process. Is, you, know, you, you go through a military career. I'm sure that's the way I categorize it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, other people may think differently, but... Uh, and, and I would say that uh, don't do anything different um, because I was really, I was really uh, a go-getter just trying to lean forward in everything I do and do it uh, as, as, uh, as best as I could, whatever I was handed. 
and uh, really a lot of ambition and a lot of drive. And anybody, anybody else out there, I mean, if, if you got ambition and you got drive and you got grit and you're never going to quit and uh, you have an open mind, I mean, you'll really, you'll make it anywhere you want to go in life. Uh, it has been an absolute honor, a pleasure. I don't care how many times I say it, if it gets overplayed, overdone. Uh, I, I have, my show, my rules, I'll say whatever I want. Uh, it is... Uh, it, it is our pleasure pleasure to have you on, but more importantly, we want to thank you, anybody you've ever served with, anybody who's going to serve, anybody who has served that's lost their lives, anything like that. Right now, we're seeing so much stuff going around the world, and I think we need to take time to appreciate and and send as much love and as much uh, respect as we can. So um, to you, First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek, for joining us, for serving, protecting uh, everybody that you've ever been with, for your family, uh, we just want to thank you so much, and uh, just you know, God bless, and make sure that uh, you stay safe, and all you other uh, men and women stay safe, and you know, you guys come back to all of us. Thank you so much for your support, and everybody else, uh, just keep supporting. I know there's a ton of people out there that don't understand it, but just have all this appreciation for it, and and just just the fact that you're there, uh, no matter what, regardless of what you understand is, is the most important part. Thank you so much. First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek for joining us. Uh, God bless. And uh, we'll have you on whenever we can. Whenever you want to come on the air and talk some uh, some uh, Bears football or something, you know, we, we the phones are open for you, bud. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Nope. Thank you, bud. Thank you, sir. And we'll be right back on Outreach Radio Chicago.
And that'll do it for us here on Outreach Radio Chicago. And I want to thank again. Uh, it was an honor for us to have First Lieutenant Jeffrey Meek on the show today. A fantastic story. A really cool guy. And uh, again, to all the men and women who serve, uh, p- thank you so much. And to your families, thank you so much for the sacrifice you guys make and for protecting and serving this great country so that guys like me could go to work and have fun with our families on football Sunday and uh, whatever we can do here on Outreach Radio Chicago we're going to do to make sure that they get the recognition that they deserve uh, especially in uh, these days where uh, everybody, it's just a crazy world we live in but we got to make sure that we support our, our boys and girls over there. We're everywhere in the universe guys, you can follow us on Twitter, we're at mercado2333, like the page on Facebook at Outreach Radio Chicago and if you missed any show, please go to YouTube slash Mike Mercado 2333 thank you guys so much for all the support you've been giving the show it's because of you guys that uh, we're able to get great guests like this and we have so many more great guests coming to you in the near future thank you so much guys i'm mike mercado and we'll see you next time on outreach radio chicago take us home Hav. Hey everybody, Mike Mercado here from Outreach Radio Chicago, and I just want to thank you all for all the support you have given us on the brand new show. If someone you know wants to get the word out on a fundraiser, charity, or foundation in your local community, please send us an email at outreachradiochicago at gmail.com or send me one personally at mmercado at newswebradio.net. Or you can tweet me at mmercado2333, and don't forget to like our Facebook page at Outreach Radio Chicago. From right here at the studios, we'll see you next time on Outreach Radio Chicago.